Earlier, CNBC Africa's Guzuleto Mfupi spoke to Sholto Dolamo, he's head of resources at Stanlib, to get an overview of the company's resources fund, and this is what he had to say. Look, yeah, I mean, the fund started way back. Uh, it's probably one of the, uh, the older funds that you'll find in the Unitas universe. Uh, it's done fairly well relative to uh, the resources sector or the, in the resources JSE index. Uh, we've outperformed over most periods. Like if you were, were, we like to look at uh, long-term, you know, kind of like measures. So whether you look at it over a 10-year period, over a five-year period, and even on a shorter term, I think we've, we've done relatively well. Uh, part of the reason, I think, it's it's been the type of stocks that we pick in the, in the you know in, in, in the fund. Mm -hmm. uh, we like to pick f companies that have very good management, have excellent assets, and by excellent, I mean assets that you know, will overcome most uh, cycles, right? So assets that are fairly low on the cost curve, such that, you know, uh, when commodity prices do come off, you still have a margin of safety relative to, you know, to, to, to companies that will have assets that are high cost, for example. Mm. So we, we, we have liked, uh, let's say, PHP Bulletin. <coughs> it's been one of our core holdings in the, in the fund. Uh, and we continue to, you know, to, to prefer Bulletin over, say, for example, some of the gold companies, right? We think it's got uh, excellent management it's got uh, very high quality assets, uh, very well geographically split. They've got, I don't know, assets in Australia. They've got coal assets here in South Africa. They've got uh, copper assets in Chile. So you've, you get quite a nice geographic split of, of assets. And they've got, you know, oil and gas assets in the U.S., right? Uh, so, so I think, you know, if you look at how it's done relative to, you know, say, cost of capital, for example, mm -hmm. right? So it's outperformed. Uh, I mean, the returns that you've had out of Billiton have outperformed, you know, uh, its wasted, wasted, w uh, weighted uh, uh, ca uh, capital, you know, uh, underlying, you know, the, the, uh, the under underlying what you require in as far as, in as, far as putting, you know, uh, access to the ground. I want us to explore BHP just a little yeah. further. It is the darling of many uh, investors out there. They recently published a statement where they're looking to simplify their strategy. Yeah. Does that change your view on that by any chance? It doesn't, right? If anything, it enhances our view. Wow. Uh, so over time, as I said, BHP Bulletin has been a, a company that operates high-quality assets. So if assets begin to wane in, a, in as far as their quality is concerned, in other words, if they start to become uh, high-quality assets, say, for example, their nickel operations as well as their aluminum operations, right, they're becoming more and more high-quality, I mean, high-cost high assets. So you would, to, to maintain a very high return out of those businesses, for, say, for example, return on capital of the group, right, you will need to share off high-quality assets over time. Mm. So we think this is pretty much in line with the kind of company that we invested in for the long term. Perhaps we might need to see a little bit more of those, but uh, another grouping of companies that you're very popular or proved to be popular in your fund is Sassel as well as Anglo-American. Yep. Again, yep. multinational players who have diversified assets. Yep. 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 So let's start with Anglo, right? Uh, I mean, a lot of people have been quite, quite uh, disappointed about Anglo's performance over the last, call it, uh, 18 months or so. And so have we. And I think it's, it's begun to, to turn around. And the turnaround involves uh, getting, th you know, they've got very high quality assets and unfortunately have not operated them as well as they possibly could have, right? So if you take some of the platinum assets, for example, they've got very high quality platinum assets, mm. uh, very large assets as well, right? Uh, uh, so, so, so we would expect them over time also to share off high cost assets, in other words, to improve the quality of the platinum portfolio, right? Uh, uh, and get the best out of that asset from a return perspective. And we expect them to do the same out of copper as well. So they hit a bit of a speed wobble in, 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 in copper over the last 18 months or, or so, right? But they begin to turn that business around. So, so Anglo for us remains a, a holding premised on the fact that it's a turnaround story, right? It's, it's what we call a self-help story. They know exactly what they need to do to turn that business around. And we expect them to, you know, to, to, to outperform the resources index over time. You mentioned that you're not too bullish on gold. Why? Uh, we, I mean, if, if you to talk at a macro level, for example, right, so if we are of the view, and, and this is what our house view is, if we are of the view that the world will recover over time uh, after the, you know, the global financial crisis of a couple of years ago, right, that is not in an environment where gold tends to do well. Gold tends to do well in, you know, when there's huge concerns about global growth, when there's huge concerns about global inflation, right? Mm. So we, we, we do not expect inflation to, to, you know, to run away over time, and we, we expect growth, you know, across the world to, you know, to, to recover from, from, you know, from the doldrums of, uh, that were caused by the global financial crisis. So in that kind of environment, we do not expect gold to, to do well as a commodity, right? Uh, over and above that, right? 
uh, our gold companies in SA, I mean, we, we all know, you know, the vigors around costs and, and so forth. And the more deeper they, you know, they, they, they extract the gold, the higher the costs will be. So structurally, we think they are in a quite a high cost environment, right? And, and, and one that, you know, lends them to being leveraged place. So if you believe that gold will run, Right then, obviously, you know, being you know, uh, uh, high cost uh, companies, you know, they have a quite quite a huge leverage effect, and therefore they could do well. But that's not what we believe. We believe that you know, uh, gold, you know, gold prices are not going to really much, uh, and given the fact that they are fighting ever increasing cost pressures from either power or from labor, mm -hmm. you know, we, we don't expect you know we don't expect them to do well, and therefore we you know we tend to shy away from them. Now, that's not the only sector that's going through turmoil. The platinum industry in South Africa, it's well documented yep. that it is under pressure. But you do hold uh, Impala as well as Anglo Platinum in your fund. Will this view change uh, depending on how the labor landscape unfolds? So, yeah. So, let's unpack that a bit, right? Uh, we, we are of the view that incrementally there will be more demand for platinum, right? So, if you take, for example, what platinum is used for, I mean, it's used, for example, I mean, the key use is in AutoCADs, right? Uh, and that is used to, you know, to, to damper down... Uh, uh, global warming effects caused by emission, mm -hmm. you know, emissions out of a cars, right? Now, if you're in a, w you know, in a world where increasingly we are a lot more wary about, about the air that we breathe, platinum has a key role to play there, right? So we believe, although there is turmoil right now, right, we believe that over time, incrementally, there will be more demand for platinum, uh, and therefore, you know, uh, uh, Impala Platinum and Anglo Platinum, you know, make it into our portfolio. But uh, but I have to I have to I have to put this 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 on 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 the table as well. We do hold the Platinum ETF, right? Ah. Uh, and and part of the reason I mean part of the reason is that, you know, uh, we are we are bullish Platinum long term as I, as I've just mentioned, right? Uh, however, we are you know wary of you know some of the cost inflation pressures that have come into the platinum space mm. uh, and, and, you know, and, 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 and the labor pressures that have come into the space. So we, we prefer to have a, you know, sort of a diversified uh, approach to our platinum bullishness view. So quite clearly ETFs yeah. are proving to be popular in that regard. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Keeping on platinum, one company that doesn't feature on the list though is uh, Lonman. Yeah. Is uh, that deliberate? No, it's, uh, I mean, uh, you know, m maybe I should have explained this a bit earlier, right? So one of the key things that we use to, to determine, you know, which companies to hold in, the, in, in our funds is, is valuation, right? So, so we would look at whether or not a company is trading below or above is what we believe is, is intrinsic value, right? Now, uh, companies like Anglo Platinum and, and Impala Platinum, uh, to us trading at very attractive valuations. In other words, they're trading below, the share price right now is below where we believe intrinsic value for that company is, right? Now, a company like Lonman, unfortunately for us, does not meet that requirement. So Lonman to us uh, seems to be a bit more expensive than, 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 than Impala, for mm -hmm. example, and, and, uh, and Anglo Platinum. But it, it's, it's got nothing to do with the strikes. I mean, the strikes have affected all the companies, so, uh, yeah, or most of the companies at least. So, so indeed, that goes back down to the calculations yes, as well exactly. as PEs yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. Interestingly enough, you do see a strong weighting uh, regarding oil and gas operations, but are you seeing more opportunities across the continent, as in new companies that you might uh, want to select to keep in your fund? Uh, our fund as it is right now uh, invests only in SA listed companies. We will be opening up the fund at, a, at, a, at, a, at some other point, but I mean, uh, uh, or we are at least in, intending to do that at some point. Uh, we, we do like the oil space, and then hence the, you know uh, you know our our investment in 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 in, in Sasol, mm. right? Uh, we will be looking at other you know opportunities within uh, within Africa and in a, you know abroad in as far as you know oil exposure is concerned. I mean it's one of those it's one of those commodities that I think uh, over the long term still has very strong fundamentals, mm. right? Uh, if you look at how much oil, for example, is consumed in uh, in China, right? Uh, relative to how much copper is consumed in China, right? So, so China uh, accounts for about just over 10 percent of global consumption in in in, uh, in oil, whereas in let's say copper, it's about 40 percent of global consumption, and in uh, iron ore, it's about over you know 60 percent of global consumption, right? So, so there's still a lot of growth in co in oil demand to come over over time, and I think you know it's it's quite an interesting space to be. I mean, we all you know, uh, irrespective of where you are in the world, we all want to you know to be driving cars at some point, right? Mm -hmm. As the economy improves, right? Uh, so so we expect you know the same to happen in China, right? Uh, and therefore we expect you know uh, oil consumption to grow.
or the at least oil demand to grow. Indeed. So no doubt are those con prospects potentially focused on African operations, Nigeria, the likes of uh, Angola as well as uh, Maputo coming on strongly with oil and gas operations. Exactly. I mean, I mean, even even uh, you know, if you take say for example, th there's been some interesting gas finds in Mozambique, right, uh, which are probably going to be for for the LNG market in you know into into Asia. Mm -hmm. So there's a, there's an opportunity there. There's I mean, there's been oil finds in in in, uh, in Kenya as well, uh, and in the middle of Africa. I mean, there's been there's been oil finds everywhere in Africa. So the outlook is fairly positive on that one. Exactly. But I want to get your view on the resources space in South Africa. You've been in the game for a very long time, yeah. previously held positions at De Beers as well as Lonman. Uh, when you view the weighting of resources, back in the day when the JC started, it was very strong. But today that has diminished uh, ever so slightly. Uh, your overview of, of the change and the transition that's taking place? Are we moving away from mining, maybe to more oil and gas? I think you would expect that in an economy as the economy develops, right? So, so uh, mining is, is regarded as one of the probably uh, the more uh, earlier stage developmental growth of an economy, right? Uh, so as time goes on, the service economy becomes a lot stronger and consumption becomes a lot stronger. Uh, and that's basically what has happened to the JSC. Mm -hmm. So over time, as, 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 you know, as, as the economy has grown, uh, so have other sectors to a point where now we are a lot less reliant on, on mining. Still very important, right? Uh, but we're a lot less reliant on mining. Uh, if you look at, I mean, GDP, if, if you split out, you mm -hmm. know, GDP contribution of different sectors, mining is a lot smaller now than it used to be. But that is to be expected, you know, as economies grow, you know, as economies grow.